I'm so sorry, I didn't expect to be that late. It was really hard to crack the ice. How are you, Cop? It's been a while. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I was anyway, I hope everything been fine. I'm so I didn't expect to be so. Jesus. The ice was hard to crack. school I know the last time you said you've been struggling with your assignments are you okay with them I'm not sure if your your stuff is nearly done I think next next week is my final week of my uni so I will have a little bit of free time and then I will probably stream less I have to do a full work spike all summer. So I'll probably even stream less. Probably one or two days out of the week instead of three. It might change completely. Um, because I might do full time so like part time with my uni and stuff. And also hopefully able to graduate next year. So I had to do some classes, some new uni classes um, in the summer, this summer so I'm probably going to stream a little, a lot less than I usually do last, last year. So that's just a heads up. Um, I don't know what my schedule will be because it might change. I did some Italian last night. Some. Not all. Some. <laughs> was it last night or the day before? Um, so. Even though my time is up to pace. Hopefully. Hopefully. 
guess I'm just going to test. My butt wasn't working last time I streamed, so I'm just doing this as a test run. I'm not really doing this as anything. So let me... yeah. I'm just going to do that. Okay, it's, it works now. I don't know why I keep on and off. It's such a pain, honestly. <laughs> Jojo, so I was like, ooh, this artist has like a Jojo <laughs> like a feeling. So I was like, oh. to connect to my tablet with my laptop. <laughs> and I'm trying to find something and nothing works. So I'm kind of sad for that. Whatever you want, doesn't have to be the image, but I want to sketch it. Um, weird. Can you spell that? ID. Arts. Weird. Arts. So I want to draw, I don't know, like this one, or even this one. <laughs> like weird, something weird though. But not like hard.
doesn't have to be exactly like this. It just, I just want to draw. <laughs>
so familiar to me, and then he came from the moon or something. Change your name from Black to Shimei. Um, I I do apologize for the audio. I'm sorry. Um, hmm. Why did I change? I wanted to. Sorry for that. Um, I wanted to change it from like red, like ninety-seven to Shimei because I was like, me black red thing is a unique thing. <laughs> I mean, not really a unique thing, but I mean, like, I don't know. I I just wanted to change it because I was like, mm, I'm not really feeling it. I really just started Black Redneck as like a joke without like an actual serious name that I really cared for. So I was actually just getting tired of just using the name. <laughs> if that makes sense. It just, it was just not feeling the vibe I used to have when I wanted to start it off. I mean, Drax still use, still call me Red. So I don't have a problem with you. You still feel comfortable calling me Red. It's not really a big issue to me. I just wanted to change it into something, uh, a nice name. I so said two colors with a neck and ninety something. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not sure if I'm making any sense, but. Like, it's really no hard reasoning why you just. I just wanted to change it. <laughs> um. Shimei. Because I was like. I like. I wanted to name myself Lachey. And like. Lecrae. I was like, oh, that's gonna be like, I don't really like him. So I was like, something has to have a name with May. Uh, even though I hate, because I am, I do have allergies, and May really bring them out. Um, so I was like, oh, is there a name with May in it? <laughs> and then the other two is, I don't know. I just want it. Oh no, I know, I don't know, but I don't know. I just wanted to change things up a little bit because eventually I do want to change my name anyway. So I thought, why don't I just do it now when I have time and the chance to? Because eventually, I do want to have a fully custom everything. And I was like, if I would keep the name, I would not like it. It would probably be me stopping me from streaming completely, solely because I don't like hearing Black Red anymore. So, so to avoid that, just change the name. <laughs> to be honest, that's the most easiest reason I can actually just give. Mm. <laughs> Thank 
you. Mm -mm. I think if I be married, I forgot each name meaning. But Shimane, I think Shimane means queen or princess. Agnes, my middle name, means dancing on fire. And Serena means the quiet one, if I remember correctly. So, queen, dancing on fire, the quiet or slight silent one. That's a very odd combination, I know, but it sounded cool to me. And then I finally, I don't know, I also want to, I want to ask you for your opinion as well, because I don't know how this goes. I, I wanted to call this space the backyard basement, and I, I want to know your opinion on that as well. You don't have to, but I, will, I want to know since you are in my community, I just want to know like, feedback and stuff. Just be a coincidence. Think you never know. <laughs> it just might be laundry. <laughs> Hopefully this summer I will finally have a desk so I can not use my textbooks <laughs> from high school to balance you and so, stuff. That's, that's all I want. I want to upgrade. I want to upgrade more of my tech stuff so it's better for all you guys. But I don't want you guys to suffer <laughs> this full of Less, less tech savvy, let's say. So hopefully, when I do get the full time, I'll be able to. I'm just gonna put some, maybe some drawing videos. Just to be like simple. And I do want to draw. <laughs> Mm -mm -mm. Let me find. Go 
that increases. Do that. <laughs> <웃음> 안녕하세요 조명입니다 제가 예전에 짧은 동영상으로 이런 영상을 올렸었는데 댓글에 이런 글들이 있었습니다 아마도 이렇게 생각하실 분들도 계셨을 거예요 저도 이해합니다 하지만 저에게 또다시 얼굴 그리는 방법에 대해 알려달라고 하면 저는 같은 방법으로 연습하라고 이야기할 것 같습니다. 오늘은 얼굴 그리는 방법, 얼굴을 자연스럽게 그리는 연습 방법에 대해 조금 더 자세히 이야기를 할게요. 유튜브에서 얼굴 그리는 방법을 찾아보면 이런 영상이 많이 보일 거예요. 동그라미의 선을 긋고 여기에 눈을 그리고 여기에 코를 그리고 여기에 입을 그리면 됩니다. 얼굴을 그릴 때 가이드라인을 그리는 법을 알려주는 영상이죠. 저 역시 이해를 돕고자 얼굴을 만들어가며 같은 내용의 영상을 올린 적이 있습니다. 그런데 이걸 보시는 초보자분들은 한 가지 함정이 걸리게 됩니다. 그건 그 가이드라인을 정확하게 그려야지만 얼굴을 잘 그릴 수 있다고 생각하는 거죠. 물론 어느 정도는 맞는 말이지만 사실은 그렇지 않습니다. 진짜 사실은 그 가이드라인을 우리가 정확하게 그리기 어렵다는 것입니다. 저희는 컴퓨터가 아니니까요. 이 가이드라인을 자로 재면서 얼굴을 그려야 할까요? 그런데도 이 가이드라인에 맞춰 그리다가 잘안 그려지면 뭐가 문제지? 내가 가이드라인을 잘못 그렸나? 하면서 가이드라인에 벗어난 눈코입을 그리면서 헷갈리게 됩니다. 그런데 그건 맞는 이야기입니다. 저희는 가이드라인을 정확하게 그릴 수가 없습니다. 가이드라인으로 저희가 배울 수 있는 것은 어느 정도 근접한 곳에 눈코입을 그리면 된다 라는 것 정도 뿐입니다. 이렇게 간단하게 그려보는 연습은 얼굴의 자연스러운 미래를 머리로 외우는 게 아니라 눈으로 익혀보기 위함입니다. 그래서 저는 얼굴 그리는 연습을 할때 초보자분들에게는 닮게 그리지 말고 처음부터 예쁜 눈코입을 그리려고 하지 말라고 이야기합니다. 그 대신에 이렇게 점눈 세모코 so 일자 입으로 간단하게 그려보는 <웃음> 연습을 많이 하라고 추천합니다. 물론 얼굴을 아예 처음 그려본다면 기초 가이드라인은 필요할 거예요. 그 내용이 궁금하신 분들은 오른쪽 위에 링크를 참고해 주시면 됩니다. 그럼 간단하게 한번 해볼까요? 동그라미를 그리고 십자선을 그리고 양옆을 살짝 잘라줍니다. 그리고 턱의 위치를 잡은 다음에 턱을 이어주고 머리 모양을 이어줍니다. 귀를 그려주고 이 눈썹 라인 아래에 눈을 그려줍니다. 코는 눈썹 라인과 턱의 가운데에 그려주고 입은 코와 턱의 가운데에 그려줍니다. 음... 이게 다입니다. 하지만 이렇게 가이드라인을 그려가도 얼굴을 그리기가 쉽지는 않습니다. 그리고 각도만 조금 바뀌어도 이 가이드라인을 정확하게 그리는 것은 정말로 어렵습니다. 그래서 이 가이드라인을 완벽하게 그리려고 하지 말고 기본적인 것만 알아두고 간단하게 많이 그려봐야 합니다. 물론 초보자분들에게는 쉽지는 않을 거예요. 하지만 또 금방 익숙해질 수 있습니다. 여기서 금방이라는 말을 잘 이해하셔야 하는데요. 어떤 것이든 무조건 많이 그려보는 This 것은 so 기본입니다. 그런데 이렇게 간단하게 그려보는 것은 시간이 얼마 걸리지 않기 때문에 같은 시간에 더 많이 그려볼 수 있다는 말입니다. 예쁜 얼굴을 그리지는 못해도 이 정도의 얼굴은 생각보다 쉽게 배울 수 있을 것 같지 않나요? 그리고 누군가는 이렇게 얘기할 수도 있습니다. 눈이 어떻게 생겼는지 모르겠어서 얼굴을 잘못 그리겠어요. 코가 어떻게 생겼는지 모르겠어서 얼굴을 잘못 그리겠어요. 하지만 제가 많은 학생들을 가르쳐 본 바로는 눈코입을 못 그려서가 아니라 그 비율을 잘못 맞춰서입니다. 오히려 눈코입을 열심히 그렸는데 얼굴이 이상하게 그려지면 속상하기만 하고 어렵다고 느낄 거예요. 또다시 시도하기가 힘들죠. 
정확히 아셔야 하는 게 여러분들이 눈코 입을 so 잘못 그리는 게 hard. 아닙니다. No. I give up. I can't draw. I s t i l got. I only can draw monsters, if I'm being honest. Not even monsters. Just weird things. I can't draw like that. It's, it's kind of hard. I want to learn how to draw so eventually I can make my own seat. <laughs> That's really the main reason I want to learn how to draw again. What is this? Oh no, that's... What is that? I don't draw stuff like this usually. These are so hard. So <laughs> to make, not make, but draw. So let me. Hmm. And I also, I think I found an artist as well. I'm gonna save a lot of money looking at the yeah. looking at the the thing. There's a lot. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Mm. This is so weird. This is so weird. Oh no. No. I'm probably just going to play a little connect. Connect for. Loading, it's loading. Yes, my Wi-Fi is also slow too. Me do No. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. I'm playing to the line. It's going to be fine. Let me know if you want anyone in the chat wants to play with one on one. I haven't played, so you probably will win more than I will lose. Um. Hmm. Yes, yeah, so my water. Okay. I hear the bottle wasn't loud. I know. Mm -hmm. Another match. Anyone? I'm just going to put it in. Anyone wants to? anyone wants to play it with me one-on-one -on -one again, I'm kind of rusty. <laughs> so, me fine. It's all in the phone. I should get my water. If it doesn't, the bottom doesn't want to open. Which is odd. That's fine. <laughs> Give me a second, and this game might well run cracked open because we're not open.
Okay, I got it open. I did a shit. Wouldn't be that loud. Just for me. Any left? Just waiting on the dude. I'm also going to show you guys what I'm drawing. <laughs> I'm also drawing as well. Dun, 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 dun. It's like, it's like. Mm. Oh no. That was close. What is it doing? Mm -mm -mm. Ah, that was the easy one. Just left. I don't look that fours in. I think that's my problem. I don't look at the whole picture. I just look at what I can do in the heat of the moment. I think that's my dying fault. Hmm. Hmm.
Mm. After this, I will be learning Italian. Maybe after two more rounds. I will be learning Italian slash Japanese, but first Italian. I have touched on Italian a little bit last night. Not completely. I haven't changed much. <laughs> so, it's kind of rusty as it kind of should be. Mm hmm. Mm. Mm. That's meant to be expected. So let me go into my Duolingo. Duolingo. I wonder what I'm saying. So I might do like half an hour of Italian, half an hour of Japanese. I don't know. Maybe I should add like Arabic. I think I have Arabic in it. I don't I don't know. I don't think I do, but I might learn some Arabic. So, uh, I don't know what other languages. Japanese of course. Um Korean I did open a Korean one though. I don't know why, I just have a feeling. <laughs> I just have a feeling of something. Like, you're telling me, oh, learn Korean. You're going to need it eventually. Like, yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. Sure. Slowing, slowing. I guess my Wi Fi is very slow today. Why are you learning so slow? Why so slow? Alright, so I was doing Japanese. Last chapter. I think Japanese last. So let me switch to Italian. Mm 
There we go. Oh, I haven't changed the category. Let me do that. Do, 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 do. Change it. I'm just adding to. Do. Mm -hmm. Gonna do that first. Still in the beginning phases, of course, because I'm very slow. Very, very slow. So, what I'm gonna do. I don't know what other languages I should be learning. Because it all depends. <laughs> it all depends. Lately, I have been having a lot of Japanese viewers, and then Turkish, then Italian, Spanish, Filipino, the Philippines, and some Arab countries. So I'm basing it mostly on that. <laughs> so I want to learn at least the basics of. Everyone's language, so it just be easier for them to talk. <laughs> so let me get my notes. I want to start off with races because I only did one, so there's only four. Io sono una donna. Io so. Hold on. Io and Madonna. I am a woman. I am a woman. Okay. Wow. Okay. Uh, ragazzo. Ragazzo. Am I mean, wait. Am I, no. Hold on. Am I missing? Oh no, I'm mixing them. I don't know. It's not here. So. Ragazzo. Oh my god. I forgot that. I was like, am I not missing something? That's right. Io sono la ragazza. I am a boy. My glass. I am. Oh, okay, I am. I, I'm the girl? Sono la. Yeah, okay. Io sono l'uomo. I'm gonna skip the mic. Uh... Io. Sono. Una donna. Una. All right, all right. Okay. And this one. Oh. oh my god. I'm going to get to these. I always get confused. Okay. Uh... Io. 
Solo. Sí. Oh, okay. Uomo. Sí. Donna. Donna. Ragazza. Ragazzo. Un. Io. I'm getting better. I'm getting a little faster. A little, a little faster here. Um. Io. Sono. L. Donna. Uh. Oh my god. Fucking man. Un. Donna. Uh, Uomo. So, so, oh no. Ragazzo. Ragazza. Ragazza. Oh Assume. Um, man. So it's no A. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Mm. No, I don't feel like that. I feel more like three. Oh my god. Un ragazzo. Um, Un ragazzo. ragazzo. Um. Io sono la donna. Wait. No, uno. Oh my God. Okay. Okay. Una. Donna. Okay. Io sono una ragazza. Io sono una ragazza. Io. Io sono. sono io sono una ragazza ragazza okay. ragazzo un ragazzo Io sono una ragazza. Yes. Io sono la donna. Mm -hmm. Wait a second. I did do it. I know. Lei è una ragazza.
Nice. Me. He. Um. I guess she is a girl. She is. Oh, <laughs> I didn't really to put sandals. I was right. Lui mangia. Lui. Lui. Mangia. Mangia. Lui è un uomo. He is a man. I'm sorry. He is the man? No, a man because um. Um. Tu sei una donna. Tu. Tu. Se. Sei. Um. Una. Donna. donna. Tu sei una donna. Okay. Il ragazzo mangia una mela. The boy eats the apple. Ok. Wait, no. The boy. Boy. Wait, ok. Boy eats. Oh, an apple. Oh, okay. That was fine. Mela. Uomo. Ragazza. Un. Lei. Tu sei l'uomo. Tu sei. You know what? All right. La donna mangia la mela. No. La. la. Donna. Donna. No. Wait, no. La donna mangia la mela. Mela. No. Mangia la mela. Mela. La donna mangia la mela. Okay. This. I'm really doing this from memory, so. Hopefully. I'm, I don't suck as much as I used to. <laughs> um. You. Oh my god, I forgot what you would mean. What is you? What is you? Oh my god. Oh. Uh, um. Say. Uh. What are? I know what A is. The oh, so it's one and the same. So I like, get confused. Words are one and the same. This is so different than English. That's so why I kind of struggle. Un uomo. Lei è la donna. Lei. Lei è la donna. Lei è la donna. 
N Manja N La Donna No Lei è la donna Oh, the E E E È La Donna Mela Lei Lei Lui Lui Tu Un Lei è la donna. Ok. Tu... Hmm. I don't want to mess this up. Mm, the what well, is I O right? Uh, okay. uh, I'm this one right. Ragazza. So each. E ragazzo mangia una mela. Mm. Lui è il ragazzo. Lei è una ragazza. Il ragazzo mangia una mela. Lei beve. Beve. Lei. La ragazza mangia il pane. La. Il. Mangia. No. La ragazza mangia il pane. Wait, what? No. Ragazza. I? La 
Ragazza mangia il pane. I. Il pane. Pane. Ok. She drinks. Lei beve. Tu mangi il pane. Too much bread. Bread. Pane. Mangi. You. Eat. The bread. La donna beve. Ma La donna. Donna. Beve. I. Tu. La donna. Mangio. Sardolo. Zucchero. Zucchero. Ah. Ah. Ok. Bevi acqua. Drink water. Drink water. This is hard. Let me. I. I'm not trying to cheat here. I drink water. Drink water. I've got my eye. The eye is swollen, right? That's something else. It's so confusing. It's so confusing. I'm so confused. Baby. Acqua. Oh, I took the wrong one. Zucchero. I. Io. Donna. Lui. Baby. L. Aqua. Hmm. I don't know. No. Okay. Mangi. Tu 
Mangi. L. Zucchero. Eat the bread. This mm. eat the bread. This is my super big bread. Manjo. E. Pane. Tu. Mangio. Zucchero. Oh my god. Bevo. L. Acqua. Oh my god. Wait, I pressed it and you said it was wrong. You. Uh, so they confused. Manjo. Io zucchero. Uh. Twenty. Hmm. I'm going to take a slow break from learning languages. Do some crying.
Oh, wait, why is it? <laughs> We're just gonna watch this one. It'd be fine. To be a fully trained sushi chef to know how to skin and debone a fish. It's incredibly easy. Anyone can do it with ease. Step one, sharpen your knife. Ensure the knife is as sharp as possible. This will make skinning the fish a lot easier. Step two, cook the fish. <laughs> Step three, skin the fish. Step four, debone the fish. Step five, skin the fish. Step six, debone the fish. Step seven, don't egg the fish. Step seven, don't egg. Step seven, don't. Don't egg the fish! Stop egging the fish! Please! Stop! Stop egging the fing fish! Stop it! Right now! Or I quit! Step seven, don't egg the fish. Step seven, egg the fish. Step eight, skin the fish. Step nine, deep on the fish. Step ten, bail in the fish. Place down the plate. Place down, place down, place down the plate. Place down the plastic plate. Perfect. The fish has been skinned, deboned, and cooked. Perfect. The fish has been skinned, deboned, and cooked to perfection. <laughs> this is like the odd. I never watched these before. I watched one clip. How to clean a stained mattress. This works on all types of mattresses and all types of stains. All you need is baking soda, dishwashing liquid, hydrogen peroxide, and white vinegar. In a large mixing bowl, add the following. One quarter cup of dishwashing liquid, one quarter cup of hydrogen peroxide, half a cup of white vinegar, and one tablespoon of baking soda. Thoroughly mix it all together. Leave the mixture to rest for a couple of minutes until all the bubbles have disappeared. Transfer the mixture into a spray bottle. Start by spraying a generous amount of the cleaning oh agent God. directly onto the Another stain. Bot. Ensure you cover the Seriously. whole stain thoroughly. Then use a scrubbing brush to scrub the stain. Still stained? Don't worry. Severe stains will require multiple treatments. Simply go over it again. Still stained? Simply go over it again. Still stained? 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 Go over it again. Go over it again. Oh. Go over oh. it again. Go over it again. <gasps>
this? Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god. What? It must be a pain to clean it up after the red. Got to be. Unless you got someone else to do it for it. <laughs> okay. Oh, why? 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 So please.
god. <laughs> this how to pick up a lock how to pick a lock using this method you will be able to pick open any lock in seconds using just a paper clip this method works on all locks no matter how small big or complex the lock mechanism is no lock is pick proof they all can be picked with ease Please note, this video is for educational purposes only. Using this lockpicking method for any illegal activity is prohibited. This is only intended for use on your own property. All you need is a lock and a paperclip. Step 1. Prepare the paperclip. Unfold one side of the paperclip and extend it fully out. Try to make it as straight as possible. This will greatly reduce the time it takes to pick the lock. Step 2. Picking the lock. Insert the unfolded paperclip into the bottom end of the lock. Push it in as far as it will go. Begin turning the paperclip in a clockwise circular motion. Keep turning for approximately 20 seconds and the lock will crack open. There are many ways to open a lock. The most effective techniques are using a paper clip, using a saw, hitting it with a hammer, hitting it with a spade, blow torching it, smashing plates onto it, cooking it into a chicken, and freezing it. If all that doesn't work, try the following. Grab an egg and crack it onto the lock. Perfect. It's now unlocked. <gasps>
my god. Jesus, so <laughs> that's funny. Must be so. So...
This video is sponsored by House Party. Are you unable to travel abroad to see your loved ones or family members overseas? Well, House Party is the app for you. The House Party app is an app you can use to connect. Oh, that's him. So that's what he looks like. Oh my god, what is this? <laughs> Hmm. Hmm. I hope to eventually also to make a cooking stream. That's also my plan. I want to make a cooking stream. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I'm not good at cooking at all. So, don't expect high hopes for the best cooking. Mm. I'm just not. There yet. I guess I don't know. Let me find something. I saw the other day, I'm not sure if I can find it again.
Hmm. Yeah, let's see it. I know I don't have the equipment. I I want to save up. I do want to do a cooking cooking stream. I don't know how to do the basics, but I, I want to do a cooking stream. <laughs> I don't have the stuff. It's been it like the price side is like a bit much, so I'm gonna wait until it goes a little down, so so it can at least work. But I don't know. Even if I want to do a cooking show, I don't know what meal what you would think be good to cook with. Cause I have hard ideas of what I want to eat. Per day, so it's <laughs> so if you have any food recommendations that you want me to cook when I do have the tech, uh, let me know. I'll put it on your list, I'll write it down. <laughs> Give me a second. It's really slow today, I don't know why. It was a little bit faster yesterday. Well, I'm not sure if you know about the new commands. I, I think there should be one. I think. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm cute on Twitch. I think you should know them. I don't know why it's taking so long. Why is it taking? Let me be fish. Why is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's not really commands. I give you. I give you this. Hmm. Let me give you an example. Mm -hmm. Like this, this one I was talking about. It's really announcements.
scientific community is far from scientific, in my opinion. I can sense the, the peace okay. where I come from, the peace that I have access to. And then you well, can just clunking at random times. I'm ready for it. I guess that worked. Yeah, we you know. Let's get connected. Yes, two hours. Is this your first Fantinio event? Yes. I immediately got hooked. I started mm -hmm. listening to him every day. He was an intelligence that amazed me. The connection is something special there. Yeah. They're not really concepts that you can understand with the mind. When people have like a laughter or a crying, it's because they're really feeling the energy that is in between the space of those words. Things like this start with who will look for answers, people that are suffering. The whole reason we even know about you guys is because the media trashed you, right? Oh, yeah. Why do you think they think you're a cult? From my perspective, it's like, let's talk. Like, if I'm in a cult, like, I'll admit that I'm in a cult. Like, that's okay. Let's just talk. What is it exactly? Like, because this is adding a ton of value to my life. We've arrived in the Netherlands. We're here for a sort of spiritual self-help retreat run by a 30-year-old self-styled guru, Bentinho Massaro. He's amassed a pretty big following online on his various platforms, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. Massaro claims to have first found spirituality at age 10 and went on to seek enlightenment in his teenage years, exploring different philosophies, teachers, and methods until he reached the conclusion that these spiritual authorities were no more enlightened than himself. So he began his own teaching, and today encourages his followers to become enlightened and empowered through his Trinfinity Academy, with a goal of creating what he calls an enlightened civilization by the year 2035. He's gained a global audience who travel thousands of miles to attend his in-person retreats for as much mm. as 2,000 US dollars a pop. Oh my Bettina's God. social feed sells a lifestyle we all want. Adventure, success, glamour, wellness. Within our hearts, we already know who it is we want to be. He touts himself as a spiritual leader for the next generation. I love you. <laughs> but he's unlike other spiritual gurus. Fuck your relationships. They mean nothing. Set your standards a little higher. Feel a little bit more miserable about yourself when you're being fucking retarded. Oh my That's God. He hasn't been without his critics. He was recently based in Arizona, where he became mired in a scandal. A since removed medium article was published by a writer who attended one of his retreats, reporting what she described as cult like practices, including promotion of fringe ideas, like joining forces with our alien counterparts, his purported telekinetic powers and what she called normalized abuse. We decided to go see Bentinho in his homeland, the Netherlands. We've come here to dip a toe in his world firsthand, to see whether he and his followers are in fact onto something the rest of us are missing out on. Okay, so we're approaching the venue. It's a castle, and it's really nice. It's extremely pleasant here, I must say. So we're waiting at the gates of the venue where everyone's checking in. It's kind of a very relaxed, gradual check-in. People are coming in dribs and drabs. The thing doesn't kick off for a couple of hours, but it's a very chill vibe, you know. Everyone arriving is kind of fresh-faced and relaxed. Some people are carrying yoga mats. Everyone's super friendly, like smiling at us, like intense, glowing eyes. Why do you like Bentinho? What about it works for you? When I start listening to him, for example, when I drive to work, my days are more in alignment and things just flow easily and crazy shit starts happening, basically. Yeah. To make sense of all the hype around Bentinho, I sought out his coordinator for the event, Adrian. Can you give any insight into sort of what's going to be taught this week or what we, could, what we can expect? Yeah, this is so hard. I mean, it's okay. I'm sorry. Why? Why is it hard? 
because I've never actually had to explain it to someone before. So the title of the retreat is called Infinity and Absolute Abundance. So one of the main teachings that Bentinho has had for years now is the moving towards the highest understanding that we have of who God is or of the Creator. And so infinity is a way of expressing that. Yeah, it's just a word, right? But it, we have to use words, and that's like sort of a good word. Do you think that because the way that Bentinho teaches is so new and unique that there almost isn't a way yet to, to describe it? One of the things that the people love so much about him is his ability to explain things in a way that uh, people in modern times understand it, especially younger people, millennials. In general, I was none the wiser as to what I could expect from the retreat. I couldn't seem to get a straight, concrete explanation from anyone I spoke with. Maybe it had to be experienced to be understood. Things are finally about to kick off. We're in the main hallway where the kind of action happens. And now we're just waiting for Bentinho. So you're having a meeting? Mm-hmm. Just a little team vibing, you know? And we're allowed to be there? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Can you give me any insight into, like, what I might hear or what kind of themes or topics or anything, or is it a surprise? Sure. Um, well, I will be laying out some of that tonight during mm -hmm. the session, but okay. right now I'll attend to this. Yeah. Because we also have to get... Yeah, do your thing. I, we don't yeah. want to hold you up. All right, thank you. I finally met Bentinho himself. He came in flanked by his security guards, but just came straight up to me and was extremely personable. Just like, just seemed like a normal dude, not like a big, meaningful spiritual leader who commands loads of attention and lots of followers. I'm yet to see him like do his thing, but he was perfectly pleasant. You made it. <laughs> Silence is very addictive, huh? Get immersed in it, starts to feel really good, expansive. So one of the most important things to make this whole life sustainable, especially when you start waking up, spiritually speaking, and you start seeing through the illusions of the matrix, both the matrix as well as the the matrix, the grand matrix, the grand illusion of form, of matter, of that which changes, that which comes and goes. As Bentinho addressed the audience, I whipped out my phone and began frantically taking down as many notes as I could because I was unfamiliar with much of the jargon and found him almost impossible to follow. Enlightenment or self-realization is the path of retracing those steps, those man-made steps, until one finds experientially, instinctively, intuitively, meditatively, the source of one's being, oh which God, is dude. transpersonal. Bentinho had spoken a lot of easy to claim new age buzzwords that weren't in fact all that revolutionary, but it was the way he'd strung those words together that was confusing to me. Those creatures that make up our body are second density beings. They're creatures, cellular life forms. Try to find a rainbow and put it in a pot, you'll fail nine out of 10 times. Does that make sense? I have to say, a lot of it went over my head. I didn't find it that accessible. So to me, you know, I have a few questions about that. I felt like I was back in math class. The numbers looked familiar, but the equations didn't make sense to me. What then was new here? And if nothing new, what were we paying for? So with that in mind, I decided to try to seek some clarity direct from the source, while his bodyguard drove us across the grounds. I can think of 500 people who would kill me to, for the chance to sit with you in a, in a, in a <laughs> golf cart. If we sit here, we can continue dialogue. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows what, how, so right? what How long have you had bodyguards? What's that like? Actually, I generally only 
have had them in my Dutch retreats because they're usually bigger events, so I need a little bit more of a buffer. And also, the, you know, we've received some threats for people we don't really? know and that kind of stuff. It's, um, <laughs> I'd say it's 60% that. It's 20% I really like this guy. <laughs> and 20% just in case. You said to me the other day when you were on stage, you had an idea of how you could possibly show me something practically to help me get some insight. Well, I don't know about the practical part, right. but when you become extremely present and clear-minded, your energy field, if you will, starts operating like a mirror. Yeah, I'm, I'm ready for it. Let's get weird. Let's get connected. Let's get connected. When we are silent, we get to see ourselves, every bit of it. The more silent you become, the more you see. The more you move, the more you navigate, the more you create stuff, the less you tend to see. Don't make it about any of the concepts. They're just tools to drop you in. If you can be with silence, go deeper and deeper into the silence, the stillness of being. It will teach you everything you need to know. Is what you teach, what you offer, is it almost like a form of therapy? Well, over the years, I've developed, I guess you could say, different levels, because you're always working with individuals who are at a different stage of being comfortable with who they truly are versus thinking that they're something they're not. And you could say that the more beginning levels, in a way, deal with therapy, because people need to have that basic understanding that all is well, that it's OK to feel the discomfort. But beyond that, I mean, spirituality goes, goes beyond therapy, for sure. The world has already changed a lot in recent years. The digital era has made us more aware of our anxieties than ever, and we're losing faith in conventional solutions. So where do we turn when regular therapy and medication is losing our trust? Mm. And as more people are willing to pay for the wellness fix, it's people like Bentinho who can reap the benefits. Something as basic as shared silence, which need not carry a price tag, is being commodified in a way that can create barriers to simple and healthy practices. Practices like yoga, meditation, and if you're so inclined, ecstatic dance. Ecstatic dance is an amazing dancing experience. And for that, we have three basic ingredients. There's no shoes, there's no boots, and there's no dog. Which means you can dance two hours. sport but sober euphoric techno discos are not really my scene it's just not how i choose to let off steam or express my true self after an hour i was ready to call it a night i'm still trying i'm still wide open you know trying to understand what this is all about today you know i listened to more of bentinho's talk i grasp bits little bits but i still don't find it very accessible which is disappointing um but generally positive vibes and tomorrow's another day so we're on our way to breakfast which every day is silent so that's gonna be pretty nice i hope um probably not that practical if you have kids or whatever but um i'm looking forward to it
While I can appreciate the value of a bit of quiet me time, I was having trouble figuring out what, apart from his lectures, sets this apart from the plethora of meditative practices available to us anywhere in the world. Is this just a new take on a not so new thing? So there's a water it fight basically is to my right, taking and a volleyball game. It is worded wow. differently. What fun! Right? Do you play this every day? Mm, no. Whose idea was it? Some other volunteers. So they just nice. said, let's build some water balloons, and then we ran out there. It's like being a kid again. Yes, yeah, right. right? One of the things that you do or have done is say people have to be okay with being uncomfortable and being offended, right? Well, in general, in life, yeah, I yeah. think that's a good thing to develop. Right, and yet you're saying this in 2018 when it seems like the next generation of young people, it's all uh, uh, easily offended. Um, have you thought about that? Definitely, uh, and I run into that quite a bit because I am irreverent in my work um, when, when appropriate or when I think like it gets the message across. My point of view on it is that everyone should throw their points of view away. Ultimately, I understand this is a lot to ask of people, but... Uh, throw your points of view away as much as you can. The reason people often go on a spiritual journey is because they've experienced some suffering. So when you're automatically catering to a group of people who are, in theory, more vulnerable, that's a lot of responsibility for you. It's one of the reasons why I'm shifting out of the bigger retreats. There are people that are vulnerable that come into the retreats. Not all of them can be recognized or filtered out. I do experience greater peace of mind when there's 20 people and I can talk to each one of them, and I can be accountable for each one of them. Being at an event of 500 people of all different backgrounds, there's just no, technically there's no way that I could talk to all of them. And mm -hmm. I do feel slightly vulnerable as a teacher giving those bigger events. There's a sense of vulnerability there. The scientific community is far from scientific, in my opinion. I'm scientific. Jesus and more convoluted terms talked about this. And many teachers have spoken about this all over the world in all ages of humanity. One day I was actually just kind of in my room sitting there and I just had this really strong urge to type in universe into YouTube. So I did. And uh, Bentinho's Parallel Realities video came up and I clicked on it. And I, I couldn't understand a word he was saying. I had no spiritual okay, context. that makes me feel better. Yeah, <laughs> I had no spiritual context, but I just had a feeling to just go deeper, just keep going. Was this something you were like doing on your own or is it like you had a couple of friends who were also, cause? No, it was just me. Yeah, it was a very, very strong desire to, cause I knew I was like, there must be a, a formula for happiness. We're, we're supposed to be happy. So what is this? What is the guy like? Not always. I don't think <laughs> that much. So, yeah. Uh, oh, you know, we right. like to go to the movies. Do you guys have, like, a favorite movie, TV show or something that you're, like, super into? Or? No, but we we do that. quite a bit of uh, superhero movies. Yeah? yeah. <laughs> you know, it's fun to immerse ourselves in that and experience how there's soft disclosure happening of things within the government, technologies perhaps that are not being shared with the, everyone, but they will share them in these amazing movies and plant the ideas in people's heads. So you think there are predictions happening in these like superhero movies? Well, uh, not predictions, but I'm saying um, that you can see subtle hinting to, to a more magical type of existence. Should we move with this? We could sit under it. But you know, you can stop the rain. What? Stop. Try it. How? That's the intended. It's not apart from your consciousness. Mm. Should we both try and stop the rain? Let's do it. Okay. What am I, I'm gonna just think. Just visualize, visualize a clear sky, for okay. example. And the absence of Can rain. I close my eyes? Mm -hmm. Okay. be absolutely confident 
that it has stopped raining in that reality. I think I'm a bit rusty. Despite our combined efforts, the rain prevailed. <laughs> it's trying to stop. Okay. 2035 is your stated goal on, on your website for upgraded civilization. Mm. Why 2035? That's my estimation of when we will have changed so much in all of our levels of our society that one could look back from that point onwards approximately and say we were a changed civilization by then and there was no going back. Are you okay with the Sketch. fact that Sketchy. a lot of people are going to be less inclined to listen to what you have to say because you talk about extra it's, terrestrial it's a, stuff? Yeah, it, it's a balance because there's a lot of people that are that come to my work through that avenue as well. So if I don't also help normalize that concept, then I'm leaving a portion of my job. And I don't feel afraid of it because I'm so confident that this will become clear, right. that even if people ridicule it now, um, which is totally fine, then they will see later on. Once someone in the media has labeled you a cult, it's really hard to ditch that label. How do you feel about being called a cult? We are a cult. We are a curious, understanding, loving tribe. <laughs> I mean, in terms of the definition of cult as something problematic. I've never experienced cults. So after some of those others, other people painting that picture, I started doing a little bit more research, just learning about it. Like, why is this such a big deal to people? Why do they label it a cult so quickly? What do they even mean? When they label it a cult, it's because they haven't really experienced the benefits. They see it from the outside in, and it, it reminds them of things that they fear or are taught to fear. So yeah. I don't know how to answer that question. If you grow, you're going to have more and more fingers pointing at you, being like, this is elitist, and, you know, it's exclusive. Is there a way that you can make it more accessible for more people? The whole idea is how to make it more accessible from the ground up. For the first three years... I'm $2,000 is not I did everything for free, a cheap box, though, so I don't I like, think okay, that I makes If I want to make a big sense. difference, then I need to have more means available to me to make that difference. People very quickly judge a high price ticket, but they don't understand, A, the cost involved, the cost of maintenance of a team, of people, of this message, and the energy requires to output so much service to others. Mm, yeah, I kind of want better, but still. This is nice. But you brought up a good point, which is people perceive that they can't do it. Right? They're in a state where I'm in the office, I only have so much money to spend, I can't even go on vacation, I don't have the money to do this. And this is, that's one of the most tugging things on my heart, so to speak. It's like, okay, how can we address that? That's exactly what we teach, is how to vibrationally upgrade your consciousness and your understanding and how you apply yourself to life to where you can attract those resources to do what you want to do. And you're not stuck, it is by choice that you're in that job. It's by choice that you have the life you have. And knowing that, and doing some of the work, you can change it. At a moment in human history where things feel more dysfunctional than ever, it can be tempting to want to throw the whole world away and start over. The like-minded spiritual seekers I met here seem to thrive off the more obscure, intangible elements of Bentinho's teachings. With reality such a disappointment, the further away from it Bentinho goes, they seem ready to follow and pay for. But beyond the obvious benefits of a wellness retreat, are Bentinho's followers leaving with anything more than what they arrived with? Is this a wellness cure-all or a simple band-aid for a deeper issue that only serves to make reality a harder pill to swallow? With many of us still coveting the type of lifestyle seen on Bentinho's Instagram, I can understand the appeal of looking further and deeper for answers. The only thing I have should we go? A largely white, well-to-do community that considers itself upgraded, a better version of the rest of us. While this all looks The only thing I have a problem with is like if you're such a health and spiritual wizard in any sense of the word, quite literally, why would you why would you flaunt 
the house, the cars, the jewelry, or whatever else. Why will you do that? Why will you do that? that to me, that makes no sense. It's not. It's not smart. <laughs> It's just not smart, at least to me. I don't. It makes no sense to me at all. But again, this is my opinion, so it's not really much. But it, it makes no sense. That's true, but again, that's true, drag. But there's always a but. It doesn't make any sense. If you're such a gruel, why would you? Why? Why? I don't get it. Why? <sighs> yeah. Uh, this is true. This is true. I don't know. It's just, it makes no sense. I mean, Drag, if you was, if you was a wizard in your own, what would you do? With a price tag for per person, per person, at least five grand. And their beginning entry is five grand. If you got five grand, how much? Let me actually know. Do I have a calculator? <laughs> let me bring out the calculator. Calculator. Five. Five grand times, hmm, eight hundred people equals forty thousand dollars. <laughs> forty thousand dollars. So you've got five grand, and you got eight eight hundred people who want to join into your space you will cheat some magic i mean obviously i mean you have to <laughs> yeah i know i just i don't even know it just i wouldn't do it because it makes no sense if you want to look humble as possible you would not show him anything oh my god i sound like a person who say the taxes but it's it's not I don't know. It just to me it makes no sense. It makes no sense, and it's like you're making it obvious. You're making it so obvious when you make it well known. Like I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> I don't get it. It makes no sense to me. Cause I know I wouldn't do that. I would just look as homeless as possible. <laughs> I see. Anyway, it just looks homeless. I will get the bare minimum. Do the bare minimum and that's it. Like, get the cameras out of my face kind of thing. That's how I see it. I don't know. Oh, who are those? Oh my god. Oh my god. Guys, oh god. When you have armed citizenry and they try to do evil, they get shot quickly. They get punished fast. My name is Hyungjin Sean Moon, known as also Pastor Sean or known as also Second King. My father is the Reverend Sun Myung Moon, who believes the Lord of the Second Advent, and he has created a kingship line of which I am his and that is sure. successor. The Bible is very clear in showing that Christ requires us to be judges over the nation, judges of the wicked, to rule with the rod of iron. I convey the message from the second king about the rod of iron, but their reaction is, you're so wicked and you're in a cult. Are you trying to appeal to all the pro-gun people of America? I'm not telling you how to do your job, but it seems like a massive opportunity for your church. To be a king, you're going to have territory, mm -hmm. and you better have a means to... Keep that territory. Pastor Sean and God working through him, he's taking the providence of God forward. In the scripture it says, thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Now that on earth is literal, okay? He is no longer talking about, let's just wait till we die and the kingdom comes. He's like, oh, we're gonna build this here and now. Let us pray! Let us pray! 
Psalm 2 and also Revelation 2 says that the believers will rule with the rod of iron. It's 2018, and we seem no closer to understanding the meaning of life. If anything, it can feel like we're further away than ever. When looking for answers in such a confusing world, having something to believe in can be a convenient remedy and a revealing reflection of the society we live in. We're in Pennsylvania. It's just a two and a half hour drive outside of New York City. It's extremely rural. I'm sorry, this is only in this, the country of America. I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, actually, is a good brand name, actually. Which has origins in Korea, is based in America, Spray them with that tick stuff. and has been accused of being a cult. We're going to start at low ready, as we've been practicing. Led by the charismatic pastor Hyunjin Sean Moon, or the Second King, these Christians believe they must build God's kingdom on Earth, and to do that, they'll need guns. We thank you that we would have the opportunity to be able to practice and love God and love our neighbor. From you, we receive our rights of kingship and sovereignty. And Father, these the right to bear arms that we exercise today. In your precious name we pray. Amen. I don't think no. Good job. I don't think they were calling us guns for God. How long have you been to the church? So my parents, you know, were yeah. part of the church, and so I grew up kind of like in the faith. But my family has always been into like the Second Amendment and hunting, so that's been a part of my life this whole time. We're gonna have to stop. The actual How does faith element play into this activity? Being able to take your own life so, as seriously as God takes your life is, I think, loving God and showing God, yes, I appreciate this life, this gift that you've given me and the lives of those around me. And I want to take your work seriously, so I'm not going to just be stopped by some crazy dude who is trying to hurt me. I consider this an honor to be able to train in this way. This is the Peace Kingdom Police, Peace Kingdom Corps. And our motto is love God, love your neighbor. As a Christian community, we're not naive about what evil intent Satan has mm -hmm. in for us. I think a lot of people think that because we have guns and we like guns, we're gonna go out looking for trouble, yeah. like some vigilante. Mm -hmm. There's nothing further from the truth. I would just as soon be left alone. But if somebody's gonna come to my house to rape and kill my children, I'm sorry, all bets are off. And I don't, I dare say, I, I think you think the same way. It was your mother, your sister, your brother, you know, or your father. I mean, come on. Let's realize we have to understand that there's evil in the world. The police can't always be there. And in many cases, like it was in Parkland, Florida, they just did not do a thing about it. You had a kid in there going there mowing kids down. Oh, with, with one of these, yeah. With one of these. So what do we do? We accuse this. What about the sheriff who should have gone in there and stopped it when he had the power to do so? Police. Until recently, the Unification Sanctuary had kept a fairly low profile. Then, in February 2018, the church mm -hmm. made national news. I think it actually is real. The congregation I think they even have an Instagram if I be married correctly. Because I saw them passing once and they have an Instagram. The ceremony you probably look it up after this. For its timing, ...during what felt like such a consequential period of America's gun debate. All that weapon is good for, mass killing. And you want to bless it? Shame on you! So where did this right-wing, Second Amendment-loving church with its devoted following and young leader even come from? It's really the crack of dawn here. We're on our way to Pastor Sean's house because so I think it's actually he real. begins recording his weekly I want to be surprised. broadcast yeah, called The King's Report. Mm. So you, we weren't allowed to know Pastor Sean's so address, really so one before. of his inner circle drove us up into the hills. Thank you, Regis. Very good driver. We're just arriving at Pastor Sean's property mm. where he lives with his beautiful wife. Mm. And it's, he's got a pretty it's money view, apparently, from his Not everyone wants to physically learn how to fight. Pennsylvania, New York, and New you Jersey. Know. 
there's like this hand painted sign so by it the front door. Depends on the person, really. It says Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Those are the people who obviously finance the house. Look at his Jeep. The church even has its own unique camo print that was designed for them. It's made up of crowns and silhouettes of AR-15s. And this is the crest of the church. It's got two crossed rifles. Well, that crest looks nice, crown. though. We weren't allowed to know his address. Now that I'm here, I'm going to drop a, drop a pen and screenshot it. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Everyone looks so nice in their crowns. <laughs> we arrived bleary-eyed before breakfast to a room of people wearing crowns, gathered around a podcast live stream of another man in a crown recording in the other room. Pastor Sean is only in his late 30s and studied religion at Harvard. It's all a socialism, communism gospel. Nice Jesus language and biblical language, but really what they're teaching is socialism and worship of the state. And now he's going into the world news. He'll go into uh, what he calls political Satanism, how, how Satan is working in the world to destroy sovereignty, destroy God's kingdom, and then the counter proposal of how to build God's kingdom. Today, the featured guest was a man named Andrew Hallinan, the owner of Florida Gun Supply, who in 2015 controversially declared his store to be a Muslim-free zone. <laughs> well, it is a crazy time, man. I put a sign outside my door that said Muslim-free zone. Oh. I mean, it went <laughs> and I got sued in federal court for, oh, you know, okay. So that's the big yes. problem of gun control, is that when you look at the history, You've got registration, which leads to confiscation, which leads to genocide. Every time in history, period. I mean, how, that is such a critical element in understanding firearms, is it not? I know hey, everyone's. Hey, morning, morning. I know everyone's hungry, mm -hmm. so I'm going to be fun. This one. I love your look. Oh. It's yeah, very you got a point. It's a little wacky, it's a little wacky. Some days it's wacky, but... But you've got to attract <laughs> the attention. Well, you know, yeah, it's a, this is a eBay uh, uh, suit that we got, and it's kind of a fun way to, you know, talk about serious issues. This is on our table, of course. The crowns and, and rod of iron is a real... The two main biblical accoutrements of the citizens of God's kingdom in the Bible. Right. You know, so we have those prominently displayed. But I think one of the key scriptures on God's side is the crown, that's in Revelation 3 and 11, the Bible says, let no man take thy crown. So we see that the faithful who are uh, overcoming with Christ are given crowns of, of sovereignty and royalty. And then we also see that they're given another accoutrement, which is the rod of iron. I think it exemplified strongest in Psalm 2 and, and Revelation 2, where it says they will rule with the rod of iron and they will break nations into shivers. So it has tremendous power in the hands of the co of Christ to even take down nations. The adoption of guns within the church is new. In 2017, Pastor Sean claims to have had a revelation that the rod of iron mentioned in the Bible should be interpreted as a gun. I'm now working on a new series, okay, that which we, you will see, which will combine the study of the gospel, which is delineated by Jesus Christ, the gospel of the kingdom, with how he will rule that kingdom with a rod of iron. While guns at the church are a new thing, most of the church's beliefs are not. The Unification Sanctuary has deep-seated roots in its own dynasty, one that has origins a world away from rural Pennsylvania. During our visit, the church was celebrating one of its holidays, called the Day of True All Things, a legacy of the sanctuary's Korean history. We now begin the ceremonies to commemorate the 56th Day of True All Things. So, 둘러리들이 입장하겠습니다. 둘러리 입장. The attendants will now enter. Now the uh, true parents and the second king and queen will enter. Please greet them with warm applause. The second oh, king is wearing the robes and up. crown of our true parent, Sung Myung Moon, the returning Christ. I'd like to ask the king and queen now to take their seats uh, on the 
fronts so that they can receive our, our kungas. All second generation couples in the hall will please come forward. <laughs> Kung bae. Pastor Sean Moon is the son of Reverend Sun Myung Moon, a self-proclaimed messiah from Korea who founded the unification movement, more infamously known as the Moonies. Before Pastor Sean was even born, the group was already being labeled a cult, becoming most famous in the 80s for its mass arranged marriages. Throughout its history, the group was allegedly the target of everyone from cult deprogrammers to the FBI. Many former members would also go on to accuse the church of using brainwashing tactics and no. mind control. Like his son, Reverend Moon I was known you for his anti-communist stance and endorsement <laughs> of right-wing politics. Upon his father's death in 2012, Pastor Sean, who well, believes if you want to crawl, you have to heir, bow down to me. From the Unification Church and founded I his think own, so. One I'm not sure what that was. When we contacted the Unification Church, they offered the following statement. The Unification Church is in no way affiliated with Sanctuary Church. We absolutely oppose violence and do not use weapons in any of our religious ceremonies. Even so, much of Pastor Sean's congregation is made up of longtime followers of his father, who were placed in arranged marriages by him, and who've moved to Pennsylvania to be closer to the new church. Happy today, I'm there to all things to you. Happy day to all things to you. Happy day to all things to you. Oh my god, the singing is horrible, Jesus. It's like only now making headlines again because of guns. How do you? I would have thought that. I was shocked. I was like, but you know, it makes sense, really, because the thing in the in the eighties or whatever when I first joined was um, we were brainwashed. The accusation of like cult gets thrown around in America so much, right? Um, What's it like being told by the outsiders? I already board? made the list. It should yeah, be on the Discord. Like, I need my brain washed, okay? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you think about how decadent and fallen society is, thinking that pedophilia is okay, yeah. you know, things are way, way it's off terrifying, track. yeah. The embrace of that rod of iron under I think Moon. I, I should name and what did you think I didn't the, grow up and mm, I, mean, gun I don't know if I will make a call we didn't talk about guns. completely about big it. enough it just didn't, wasn't my consciousness. I so always make the list in the discord like, I'm not sure you've seen it he's super smart and it's easy to be like Ooh. okay I can trust this guy and he's leading us <laughs> into the future right well I don't it's he's smart he is smart but I think it's his it's his profound faith you know it's his profound belief in um, the reality of God and God what God would like to see in, in this present age and when he announced the AR blessing we were like oh that's curious okay well we can do that when do people wear their crowns is it not all the time right um, a lot of people wear it for Sunday service. And how do you feel when you're wearing your crowns? I, I guess I, I feel really good now. At the beginning, I felt a little self-conscious, you know. It, it's the same with, with anything. Why do you think people are frightened? Um, oh, people because uh, so stupid, because they don't know that what you know, reality. So this is a calendar. It's only twelve dollars. Peace, police, peace, militia. So it's it's a it's a peace police branded yearly calendar. Look at these pictures. Imagine having that on your wall. Shall I get Shall I get this for my kitchen? Do you like the crown? Oh, but I'm the single right now. Ah, oh, so yeah. you have to wait till you get yeah. married. Even though I wanted to wear the crown, yeah. So, who are you going to marry? Oh, he has to be married, Jack. Are you out? married? How can I say? Parents based. Our parents are interesting themselves first. Okay. And then we can start to like communicate later. Okay. So yeah. It's kind of process. 
how is it for you and the other Korean boys and girls to bring guns into your life? Uh, frankly, most of Koreans are so surprised about our church event. And also, my ch our church is, came from Korea. Yeah. So I like convey the message from the Second King and of the, about the Lord of Iron and the gun possession in Korea. But their reaction is, you're so wicked and you're, you're in a cult. How do you respond to being called a cult? I'm already taking, uh, I'm uh, sorry. I think like, we get that more from the left, but I think many on the right would see the left as behaving as a cult, you know? Educators on the left, or many people who are put through the sort of sh government schooling, have a lot of cognitive dissonance when they have to in in interpret new data that opposes their, you know, set of values. Many people have tried to analyze that as a sort of a new religion um, that, that is being pushed on young people. It's, it's, it's devoid of God, but sort of the state has become the new God. When people call us a cult or things like that, I mean, that's what they call early Christianity. They call almost all forms <laughs> of religion that. Uh, I would say, you know, please be careful of statism. That's also a cult, mm -hmm. you know. The voice of gun reform is so loud at the moment. You've got protests all around the country, and you've literally got young people standing up and begging the government, please do something, you know, every day that goes by, you're just endorsing more innocent deaths. Um, can you explain how you respond to that? Yes, I think, you know, love God, love your neighbor. I mean, if you really love your neighbor, you love, love the people that are there in the <laughs> public schools teaching, and the kids that are there going to school. I mean, you have to do what needs to be done to protect them. Mm -hmm. You know, the Air 15 gets like this focus yeah. uh, and this sort of uh, bad rap. But uh, it, what if those people in the, in the class could shoot back at the person, at the, at the bad guy? The Bible is very clear in showing that Christ requires us to be, for example, judges over the nation, judges of the wicked, to rule with a rod of iron. People in the kingdom have some roles and responsibilities. They're not like drinking pina colada on a beach or playing harps. I wanted to talk to somebody who could help explain what it means that this group of believers who've been around for decades suddenly have a new mission, and one that arguably appeals to a new audience of Americans charged by the political climate. Dr. Matthew Schmolz is a widely published religious scholar whose work has focused on new religious movements and their place in society. How do we categorize belief systems? Uh, when are they a kind of fringe or problematic group, and when are they just an established, accepted group? I think there are two things to distinguish. In one sense, a fringe group is simply that, a group that pushes back against accepted social values. A dangerous group is usually one that's isolated and has a leader who is particularly concerned with maintaining control and also exerting that control over others. What do you make of Pastor Sean's group? I think it, it shows interesting dynamics, not only in terms of the way in which the group is organized, but its connections with conservative politics, especially gun rights activists. And that's a fairly new thing. How are we, the public, supposed to understand what Pastor Sean's adoption of guns is all about in light of the current political climate. I think that any new religion needs a constituency and especially for a group that's new, that's relatively small, making oh, connections. I don't with, think so. Um, other groups. That you have to have be within the cult something that can be to be married, not out. A leader of a new religion. You have Pastor to be Sean in it. is a Harvard educated theologian. Could that impact his leadership strategy at all? Well, certainly he's familiar with the dynamics of religious groups and what makes them successful. Certainly he has a cosmopolitan understanding of religious beliefs that would make him particularly keen, it seems to me, to adapt beliefs from different religious traditions. So in many ways, uh, at least intellectually, he's well positioned to be a charismatic leader who can draw people to him. So Pastor Sean's father's church is technically still around and Pastor Sean has broken away. How does that tension play out in terms of when we look at the direction that Pastor Sean is taking his church? Well, simply put, what you have is a succession struggle. Uh, who <laughs> has... Uh, I don't like wearing crowns. ...claim to the legacy of Reverend Moon. And if I'm being honest, I don't like wearing anything on my head. Or publicly noticeable 
and controversial rituals or beliefs is one way of attracting attention. And certainly grafting on to contemporary right-wing movements is a way of, of uh, adding a kind of gravity and weight to what is, it seems to me right now, a very small movement. With many alt-right organizations, there is a sense of impending doom or a, a sense that society really needs to be remade or returned to its pristine or relatively pristine origins, at least in the, in the minds of some of these people. So there is a great deal of social unease that provides fuel for these kinds of movements and allows them to join together, at least tactically, if not strategically. Are you trying to appeal to all the pro-gun people of America? I'm not telling you how to do your job, but it seems like a massive opportunity for your church. It's a Christian country already. You're speaking their language in a time when Second Amendment is highly politicized more than ever. I think we're definitely making networks. You know, We've connected with a lot of folks, um, a lot of the stars in the gun community we've connected with. People have been showing an interest in joining up since you've sort of become more visible and with this new look, I want to say. Yeah, um, I think I, I, mean, I think there's, there's definitely a, a, a lot more interest. People, even in the local area, uh, they've been very supportive. Our local area, we have a, we have a lot of gun owners, yeah. a lot of veterans. I think the highest concentration of veterans and gun owners. Was that part of the reason why you moved to no, Pennsylvania? No, it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't all. I mean, it just happened that we settled here and it just happened that the veterans and high gun ownership, I mean, we did not plan this at all. But if you're looking for a home for your gun church, you could do worse than here, a county with more guns than people. Even Pastor Sean's brother, Justin Moon, who owns leading gun manufacturer Car Arms, is based near here. Tommy Gun Warehouse is one of his stores. I'm at the book signing of Pastor Sean's new book, Rod of Iron Kingdom. It's taking place in his brother's gun store. And there's a huge line of people coming to get their book signed by the man himself. The book describes itself as an excellent apologetic for the Second Amendment. We've got a chapter on the Parkland, Florida shooting, a chapter about the left-wing fascist threat to democracy, the challenge of political Islam, and then a justification of why he believes the rod of iron should be interpreted as a gun, ideally an AR-15. There's a lot of people here keen to get their book signed. This book is very important, but I'm going to say actually it is dynamite because it exposes the leftist media, government, higher education collusion to undermine our freedoms. The author of The Rod of Iron Kingdom and uh, Reverend Gundin Sean Wood. We're in the business of coronating kings and queens, so we're so grateful that all the you know kings and queens of, uh, of the kingdom are out, and the rod of iron commonly is seen as a very powerful uh, tool that will bring about almost a dictatorial Christian reign. But we don't, when you look at the scripture closely, you do a close analysis, you will see that in the original Greek, it means to defend, it means shepherding, it means protecting. Our rights don't come from government, come from some bureaucracy, they come from Almighty God, and that's why they're inalienable. So uh, grateful that all of you came out today, and of course, we're very honored and blessed uh, to be here with you all. So thank you so much for coming out. Thank you. Do you feel like that was such a bland the, speech? The Rod of Iron discussion. Yeah. Yeah. The church actually finally has a chance to break out and start growing. Well, uh, Pastor so I can Sean do any and God working through him. He's taking the providence of God forward. Right. I don't think okay. I'm unique he is speech no longer talking about let's just wait till we die and the kingdom comes. He's like, oh, we're gonna build this here and now. Because in the scripture it says, you know, thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Mm -hmm. Now that on earth is literal, okay? So we have to think about how we're going to structure this kingdom, yeah. okay? Now, to be a king, you're going to have territory, and you better have a means to keep that territory. We've been invited to a barbecue of the Unification Sanctuary Church. The barbecue is popping off. I'm looking forward to eating some Unification sausages. <coughs> In the spirit of loving thy neighbor, are you saying there's a mine? I hope it's not mine. 
The barbecue was a celebration for the launch of Pastor Sean's book. Hi. Hello. And what many see as a new era for the church and its teachings. Let us pray. We are so grateful to be out here in the beautiful nature. We are so grateful to have the leadership of our second king. And we are so grateful that you have shown us so much love. A day of victory for the Rod of Iron Ministry and the celebration of the publishing of the book. We pray these things together in all our family names. Aju. Amen. The Rod of Iron Kingdom book, we have high hopes that this will represent and be a response for all the publicity we got in February that um, people will look at it and say, wow, there's something really serious behind this. This is not just somebody trying to use uh, you know, something strange or weird to get public attention. What uh, Pastor Sean has explained to us is that in any population, eight to 10% are psychopaths or sociopaths. We're gonna have these people, it happens. Genetically, I don't know why it happens. God knows I have to pray about that. I have no idea why that happens, but it happens. Have you had more people wanting to come and be part of the church? Yes. Does it bother any of you that it's because of the Second Amendment debate that's raging in this country? No, on the contrary. Pastor Sean believes that that may be the major issue in the election this fall. It's such a big issue. And so he feels that it's... Um, we're, we're, we're right where we need to be. That's a glad message. It's a glad tiding when you, we can see into the future of the kingdom where the wolves and the predators cannot succeed and that they will be punished quickly and justice will be served quickly. Of course, that's what happens when you have an armed citizenry and they try to do evil, they get shot quickly. They get punished fast. Concealed carry holders have the lowest crime rate out of any population in the United States, including police officers. But yet, the left says, you're the dangerous ones, you're the Nazis, you're the white supremacists, and the half of you, or 90% of you are not white. They say, I'm white supremacist. You see, have you looking at, have you, have you seen my complexion? <laughs> at times, Pastor Sean's anti-state, pro-sovereignty rhetoric feels better suited to a political rally than a church. The day I attended his sermon, he preached about the evils of everything from Hillary Clinton to brainwashed public school educated liberal indoctrinated cultural Marxists. So when you see brainwashed public school educated liberal indoctrinated cultural Marxists that come out of universities, think they're smart, have useless degrees, and they wear Mao Zedong shirts, forgive me if we're a little upset. What would you say to onlookers who are unnerved by this group carrying guns into church? Learn about the belief system of a group before you judge. Now that doesn't mean that we can't debate whether or not certain forms of religion are healthy or unhealthy, more rational or less rational. We can talk about all that, but we can only do that in an intelligent way when we take people at their word and at least treat these beliefs with the seriousness that their actual adherents treat them. They're sovereign individuals, co-heirs with Christ, kings and queens, and the kingdom of God. But it's not only, it can only, it can only be verbal like that. It's got to be backed up with the crown of sovereignties and the rod of iron. Real political power must be given to the co-kings and queens with Christ. That's why it is a human right in the kingdom to have the rod of iron. Rod of iron in the hands of uh, the co-heirs of Christ has tremendous power to even take down nations. I think the, the very hard left that pushes you know, gun control and confiscation of AR-15s, I, mean, I think they know the power of that rifle in the hands of 100 million people. <laughs> it's, it's, it's quite a force right, right. to deal with. Kingship of God. Oh, He's making it sound so cartoonish. 
hate me to take it seriously. The believers so I spoke to throughout the week told me they joined the church because they were seeking something. And after meeting Pastor Sean, I can see how the church has provided answers for them. But Pastor Sean's church, while small, has aligned itself with one of the most divisive issues of our time. What that means for their future is anybody's guess. What you're looking at is essentially gun fanaticism and extreme Christian beliefs and mix those together and you can see why for a lot of people that could be pretty worrisome. Says you, drag, wants to make a cult. Says it's technically your idea. Technically. What will you like to wear? Because you know, every cult needs an outfit, a color theme, a name, a logo. What would it be? Say it now, I'll forever hold you peace. In condition of all your streams, is America is that American is stupid? Eh, I think America is fun. I think America is fun. At least to me, that's how I see it. To a certain extent, every country is technically stupid. Not one is smarter than the other. That's how I see it. In the cult. Oh, that is also true. That is also true. Hmm. The colors. And. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. Hmm. No. No. I am the king of the cult. Because technically, you are my subject. Technically. So. Hmm. Not if you want to make your own sure. But. You are my child. You are my person. Therefore, I have the last say. No. I am not the joyster. You are in my kingdom. My kingdom. I should have to say. You might think, but in actuality, you're wrong. No, I don't like red, honestly. <laughs> I mean, red is fine. I just don't, I honestly don't like red. Mm. Hmm. Hmm. We have to think about this thorough to make it make sense. I don't like blue either. I like black. <laughs> I only like very dark. Like, close to the black colors. I don't like light colors at all. No. The cult rules. No. 
this is my house. This is my house, my rules. You're in my house, you follow my rules. It's not the other way around. I'm not a judge, sir. I am the queen. My name is the queen, therefore I am the queen. Do not detest me. Or I shall ban you off. And I will get my knights to do the heavy lifting. That's what they should be doing. I pay them money for the simple bidding. That's not my name. It's Shimei. And Shimei means queen. It literally means queen. <laughs> so no. 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 In your head. In your head. That's what you think. Mm -mm. No. What law is that? What law? Where is it? What's the fine print? Where's the wall? For the people who are just coming in, we are joking, by the way. It is not actually being serious. So please don't take this as a serious thing. We are literally just joking. You might lying on the floor from today. No, I am the queen. My name literally means the queen. How can you disregard that? My name literally means queen. How can you, how can you tweet? No. You're in the wrong. I'm on top and you are the bottom. Respect me. My name is not Jesse. My name is Shemay. My name, you can see my name. Shemay. What's Sausage?
<laughs> Actually, let me stream. Actually, let me. Stream. Oh no, it works. That's fine. I am the queen of this world, therefore you, drag, should be understanded that I am the leader. I expect no apprehensions, no rejections. I have the last say. It is my world. I rule with an iron fist. And there will be always with the iron fist. No exceptions. Can it, is this like a thing or like a cold? I'm going to use Wiki. <laughs> Wiki how the classic. Again, this is a joke for anyone who's stoppy by. I'm gonna do this and then we're gonna take a lunch lunch slash food break. It's very close to one where I'm at. So I have to do this one. So, I'm going to use Wiki How. I'm just going to pick an, pick an obsession. And the obsession. Hmm. 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 Session will be. I don't know what session will be. Hmm. Let me think. What will it be? Hmm. Obsession, obsession, obsession. Hmm. 
Hmm. I don't know. Let's move on. Number two. Choose a subject or thing that you are passionate about. Hmm. I am passionate. Hmm. Oh no. That's hmm. Hmm. Passion about something. I don't know what I should say. Passionate about Hmm. Hmm. Something. I don't know, it's kind of, it's kind of difficult. Hmm. I said a passion about making art and stream, but that has nothing. It has to be a decent cult. Hmm. I say fluffiness will be passionate about fluffiness. <laughs> that makes no sense, but it will be fluffiness. Uh, and then pick something that will benefit other my hmm my wisdom my my leadership which does not exist but. So the point, the point is, I'm awesome. Therefore, I'm a great leader because I'm awesome. Again, this is a joke. Um, hmm. Mm. Mm. I don't know. I'm not good with when it comes to thinking. And then learn about your session. My session is to grow. Into a queen when my knights come in the deck of dawn and rescue me from the sidelines <laughs> for the dragon that might appear in the future. 
or something. What? Something like that. And and I won't like something like a fluffy safe uh place to learn and to enhance my knowledge and grow. That's my plan. I think that's a good I don't know. I'm trying so hard to think. But honestly honest to God I, I just I can't think of anything. So nothing comes to my mind, really. And that's my plan. I don't know. I probably just write it down or something. Only in group. My biggest group I want to have is at least 25 people. At least 25. That's my group number. Share to cut rooms. I already did that. On the bottom of text. My new place to practice and worship will be here on my Twitch because that's or my Discord as well. Come up with a slogan. A slogan. Hmm. Hmm. What type of slogan would it be? Hmm. Hmm. Something... I don't know. I say hope. Hope. Hmm. Hope and despair. It's what brings people together. That's not a good slogan, though. I can't think of a good slogan. That's something like cheerful or like, I know the gospel. 
I don't, I don't, I don't, mm. I don't know. Something, something simple, but not like, hmm. I don't know. It depends how. If it's 25, and, hmm. Hmm. I don't know. I honestly do not know. Good slogan. The emptiness that walls you within comes cometh cometh the hour of the world <laughs> of the world men who have shined the light on me, therefore I am your leader of gospel. That's a mouthful. That is too much of a mouthful. That's so much of my mouth full. That's so much work. Mm. I don't know. I probably think I probably sleep on it. Get something else. Friends become a cultish. Bathe. Make sure all behavior lines with party platforms. We're going forward and like to remember you the leader of the cult so try. You cannot mess up watching other sci fi. Anything that becomes hypocritical. I see, I see, I see. Prefer as your concept as the only true idea. Hmm. I need to make it as a hit piece. How should I do that? Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. I'm getting a little, a little hungry. So let me do that. I'm gonna get some food. It is six minutes towards one. I don't know how to do basic math, so don't don't at me. I will be right back. Um, well, hopefully it won't take me that long. It's probably just going to take like five minutes. I will be right back up.
he's going the food is going to take a little longer to cook than uh, expected but I'm going to be back it, it won't probably will take us <laughs> so I, I just want to give you guys an update I'm not like <laughs> it's I didn't expect it to take us long I'll be right back
Sorry for the long wait. For the long wait. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Sketch in this chat. Still. Finish up this part, and then I take a screenshot and then search it. Not really, like photo of what I not what am I? What I have been drawing since close to the beginning of the stream.
finish up the parts. Cause I don't, I don't even really do it one side. So the other side looks unkept. So let me finish this side up. And I show you guys what I'm drawing right now. Or have been drawing. Let me fix that. Blend, 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 blend. I'm trying to also make. I don't know, cause I do. I also eventually, when I do get my my set set, as in like my overlays and like logos and like my life 2d <laughs> and stuff like that i i don't know what type of creature I mean, it's not always have to be a creature but but what type of thing i want the chat to be or look like so like, like what hmm? who's the one who like had the re debut new model. What's her name? She's a veto. Uh, she's. Bebe? Like she has the Pepe frog. Um, as it means, as in chat. And I want that eventually, but I don't know. What? I don't. I honestly don't know. As I can draw the ass. I do want that, but I don't know what exactly. So I've been kind of stuck on that. It's been tough. I'm not done with the other side yet. Let me post it. I'm, I want to show you guys what I'm drawing currently, so you have an idea of what I'm doing. So, save, save to the place. Hmm. 
do that. Mm. Discord. It's me. It's going to look creepy, so fair warning to all who doesn't like creepy stuff. Uh, it's not for everyone, but let me add image. making big okay it makes it a little more creepy that way This is what I'm drawing right now. Um, I honestly don't know <laughs> what I'm drawing. This is just a sketch, really. So, this, I wish I had like a chibi so you can see where my mice is. But the eye. I don't know. I might change the eye. I might change the shadow of the upper part. No, actually no. I actually like the shadows. So I might change the shadows to make it like highlighted and stuff. But I don't know. I honestly don't know what I'm going for with this. <laughs> I honestly don't know. Again, I know there's people who really don't like horror. I understand. But I... Why is it... Okay. But I don't like horror either. It just happens. I just... I don't... Because I don't draw the human. <laughs> it just... I just draw things instead. This is what I'm currently drawing. I don't know why I'm going with this. Again, this is not final or anything, or this is like. This is just a sketch. A color sketch. So. Probably like creepy. I might change the eyes like, in a different. Maybe I should do that as like a different brush and like stuff. I'm trying to make it. I don't like how the other side looks. So I had to probably fluff it out more. Hmm. 
what do you guys think of this? Again, this is not really anything project wise. I might do more projects. Dark to light, light to dark, and dark. Why with light kind of thing? Halo effect. If you have anything um, to show art wise, um, you can. I think this is. I think I put an art Discord. If you just want to show your art. I mean, you can put it in your own Discord. I really don't mind. But I know a lot of people would rather just have, like, a set. Go to a separate one. Because they just want to show their art and leave. So that's why I kind of want. So, I don't know. I want to be official drawer? Is that the word? I don't know. I don't know what's the word I'm looking for. But, I just want to draw for a little bit. Then, I don't know. I just want to show. <laughs> So eventually, I think I have another one. I think. I'm not sure. Look at my. F Let me look at my file. And I think I still have it on my computer. I'm not sure. Let me look at it. finished yesterday or the day before I think I show you but it was uh, let me find. so I did this one I finished this one two days ago and I wanted it was for an art class project in my uni and she wanted like, not like, uh, I forgot, she wanted like something like, like, 
decent and like something like unique. And she was like, she usually just go and pen, pencil, um, paint, and nothing digital. And I asked her, I usually just draw on my tablet because that's literally what I do. I don't draw on pencil. I don't actually draw on paper. Cause I, I really never liked drawing on paper. I only like drawing on my tablet instead. It makes me, it helps me see the piece more. And I can't really see the piece if it's drawn on paper. So. So, um, it was supposed to be an, an abstract, abstract, um, drawing. So, yeah, it was supposed to be an abstract drawing. And, it was something that I wanted to test out doing because I never really did. I think I always do, but not really. And I wanted to. How to use negative spacing in drawing. So this was like my practice. I'm using it, and I usually uh, only draw in one color. I of course use different types of the same color, but I usually just draw in one color. I don't really like adding colors to it because I don't. If it's not the same color or within the same color, I don't really like it because I can't really envision. Is that the right envision the piece if it's not in the same color? <laughs> I know that's kind of weird, but I, I just I can't see if it's not in the same color. But I'm trying to get out of it so eventually I can draw it. Multiple colors the same or the limit of three. I don't want anything in this color that's like cubes and stuff in the picture. So I'm not really good.
it's two o'clock. It's almost two. I guess I have to end it. I need. I need to find someone. have anyone to raid let me know I, I probably can find someone let me look Trying to see if there's anyone. It's hard. Let's see, I've seen Korean, Spanish, and Japanese.
find someone to read. Very Korean though, but it should be fine. Hopefully. So let me. If you don't mind the language, it should be fine. Why not expand? So see you guys Monday. I'll be I don't know what I do Monday. Everything is random. Maybe we'll continue with our cult cult talkings or whatever. Uh, but thank you all for coming. Um and See you.